Hello everybody! I'm here today with an artist Q&A, specifically about running an art business. You do the work once up front and then it works in the background. You're making money while you sleep. I think it also might be called block scheduling, so you schedule in blocks of time. Every single artist has the potential to change the world. Whenever tax time comes, they have all the information. Viewers were like, no! I've just seen the benefits of doing that rather than being fake and having no connection. It's so rare for someone's path to be super straightforward. And I'll also put some chapter markers in the description so that you can jump to different parts of the video if you're only interested in a certain topic or question. But anyway, we're gonna jump straight in. So if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm looking at my monitor where all of my questions are. <laughs> Chantelle Mixkiming asked, what do you wish someone had told you when you were starting gouache or drawing or art in general? I truly wish that someone had told me that I should have multiple streams of income. If I want to be financially stable, if I want to make sure that my sources of income are stable and sustainable, I can't just rely on one thing. A lot of us artists use multiple platforms online to make money. What if one of those just vanishes or suddenly they change all of their policies? You know, if you only rely on one of them, things can go south really quick. And not only that, but I wish someone had told me that I should have passive income. I had no idea what passive income was, and especially not with art. But basically what it means is that if you don't have passive income, every single penny that you make comes from an action, meaning you have to be constantly working to make money. This can be in the form of commissions, print sales, like running an Etsy shop or some kind of online shop, um, streaming or making videos, you know, all of these things that take action. Whereas passive income is happening in the background. You do the work once up front and then forever you are making money from that action that works in the background. You're making money while you sleep, while you eat, while you play with your kids or go on vacation. The money is always there coming in, even if it's a little trickle of money, it's still something. And for the longest time, I was struggling to make ends meet because I didn't have any passive income. I was in a situation for a long time where I had to be streaming very regularly. I had to be working on commissions pretty much constantly. And doing that kind of thing means I'm not working on my personal art. I'm not able to really step away from my art or my job at any time because if I'm not working, I'm not making money. And I realized this needs to change. <laughs> if I'm going to reach my goals as an artist and a person, I need passive income. So so at one point, I just sat down and I made a huge list of all of the ways I could make passive income. And thankfully, by that time, I had already, you know, built up my skills to the point where I could make a class, I could make a tutorial that people wanted. If any of you have been watching me for a long time, you know that in 2020, I started making Skillshare classes. And Skillshare was the first place that I really like marketed my tutorials besides Patreon. I've had, I've had a Patreon for a long time, um, but even that I felt like I had to constantly work at it to get the income. Um, but once I started making classes on another platform, so once again, diversifying my income, diversifying where I was making money, each class took about a month to make. So it was a lot of work in the background, but once it was made, I published it on Skillshare. And at first it was very slow, like little by little people were starting to watch it. And I was getting like a little paycheck each month. And my strategy was to try to make a new class every single month for a while. And I think I ended up doing like eight months where I made a class, a new class every month. And that kind of s slowly built up. It was all like snowballing together. Um, and then I stopped <laughs> because I, I had a million other things to do. And the super crazy and awesome thing is that Skillshare doubled my income. And all of that is passive income. I don't do anything except answer comments and stuff. It's there in the background working. I basically replaced streaming with making classes for a long time in order to build up those 
passive income sources, and now it's finally sustaining me. And this is just one example of so many, and I'm only one person, one example, and you can look to a lot of professional artists and, and see that they are making money through passive sources, which allows them, it frees up their time, it allows them to work on personal projects as well as all of their other art goals and, and goals in life. So that is something I wish someone had told me from the beginning. Next up, Amy Diana asked, I'd love to know how you set yourself business goals not just art goals or life goals. What categories of goals do you make? Obviously, ones might be like follower numbers, income, but what about collaborations, videos, websites, etc.? So pretty much like everyone else, I have little goals that I work towards. Some of them are weekly goals, some are monthly goals, some are yearly goals. Um, but in this case, I'm going to talk about something that uh, maybe not a lot of people know about. <laughs> um, from the very, very beginning, it didn't take very long for me to realize that I wanted to do this forever. This is what, this is my purpose in life. And I knew that if I work my butt off and if I'm smart with my time and my resources, eventually I will be able to do that. And of course, over time, I found ways to make money and sustain myself as an artist but something that I always dreamed of that was that's always been in the back of my mind and kind of something that I'm working towards long term is that someday I want to own a physical studio. This studio would be like my creative hub. It would be my my painting studio, obviously, and my business office and all of the things wrapped up into one. But it would also be a like hub in the community where other artists could come and work. It would be where I could like host plein air painting workshops where people fly in and we start in the studio, but then we go off on adventures and paint outside. Like and so that's actually why I chose my business name, Sarah Burns Studio. It was a strategic decision from the very beginning. It takes a long time to build brand recognition. Sorry, okay, so yeah, brand recognition. And because of my previous jobs, I knew that brand recognition can take years. It's something that you kind of have to work towards over a long period of time. So I figured, you know, if I give myself 10 years to build my skills, build a following online, uh, be practice my tutorials, pr get better at teaching and um, promoting myself, all of these things, by the time I'm ready or can afford to buy a physical studio, hopefully I will have that brand recognition and it will just help me get started in that part of that chapter of my life. <laughs> and so Sarah Burns Studio is what I would call it eventually. And it would be like a hub of activity, not just art, but also photography. Photography is a huge passion of mine. And if you follow my other YouTube channel, you know that. But it's a huge part of my life. And so I didn't, I didn't want something too specific to painting. I figured Sarah Burns, my name, I wanted my name as part of it. And studio to could kind of encompass a lot of different things. So yeah, now you know the story behind my business name. So one thing that I suggest is to just start by writing down all of your goals. It might be something super tiny or it might be something huge that you maybe think will never happen, but you have to write it down anyway. You have to explore it. And over time, you're going to start meditating on it, thinking about the different ways you can get there. And even if you think you can never reach this goal, most likely you can if you take the right steps. It might take a long time. Some of our goals are are big and there's a lot of steps that we need to take before we get there. But if you don't write it down and you don't start thinking about it, it'll never happen. One thing that can really help is once you write it down, you can start counting backwards in a way. So I actually wrote down an example. Um, so say I wanna have my own studio, right? My phys a physical studio. What are the steps I need to take to get there? For me, the easiest way to figure that out is 
counting backwards, thinking about it backwards. So to buy, to have a physical studio, I need rent. I need money to be able to afford to buy the actual property. How do I get that money? I can sell artwork, I can make classes, I can teach people either online or in person. Those are my two biggest income sources. But how do I get enough money? How do I sell enough classes or sell enough artwork? I need a following so I can share my art online. I can talk to other artists. I can make videos online. Basically just growing my following little by little from a bunch of different sources. I can make a newsletter and I can, you know, talk to people in person in my community. Um, But what do I tell them? What do I talk about? What do I share? Obviously, I need to get good at my craft before I can do that. So I'm going to practice my art. I'm going to practice my skills. I'm going to do everything I can to be the best at it. And I'm, I'm not saying you have to like try to be better than everyone else. You just have to be the best version of yourself. And that takes time. That takes practice. You can't just get there overnight. So I'm about six years in now. And I'm finally at a point where I feel okay with my skills. Uh, I have a long way to go to improve to the point where I want to be. Um, but I'm having, I'm like slowly growing my following as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle of my journey, maybe. So you can do this for any type of goal. You can write it down and then start thinking logically backwards. How do you get there? Next question. Okay, so here's another one of a very popular question I got. Multiple people asked, how do you balance burnout, inspiration, learning, along with all the other stuff that you're already doing? How do you keep moving forward in a positive direction of learning and being inspired without burning out? It feels like a balancing act that is easier for some versus others. Uh, Or similarly, another question, I'm curious how you manage your time and energy for running an art business and social media and the normal day-to-day life stuff. So, you know, how do you balance everything (laughs) without burning out? Well, clearly I'm not an expert at this because if you've watched any of my recent videos, you know that I burned out at the end of last year. But by doing that, by going through that myself, I learned so much about what I need to be balanced. It's just one of those classic situations where I had to learn the hard way. And I learned that I have to like physically schedule in chunks of time in my week to rest. I learned that resting is not a waste of time. In fact, it feels like the equivalent of like taking vitamins, of working out, of eating healthy, a a time to rest your mind, your body, and replenish your energy in whatever way you want to do that. Like that is so critical. And I struggle with that because I am a workaholic. I love working. I love what I do for a living. Of course, I want to keep doing it. And I love making videos so much, but they're so time consuming that I will often say I'm resting by sitting at my computer editing videos. Obviously, that's not true because my mind is very active while I'm doing it. And, you know, if I fill all of my free time with these quiet activities, it's still working. And it doesn't count. It doesn't give your mind the proper time to rest. So a huge lesson learned for me. And coming into this new year, I did take a little bit of time off and I can just see things more clearly now. I feel like I'm in a much better place with how to balance things. I personally live by my calendar. I have my Google calendar. Everything I do all week is is on there. I basically set up my schedule in like chunks of time. So I'll put a screenshot so you guys can see what I mean. I think it also might be called block scheduling. So you schedule in blocks of time for specific genres of tasks. So just say one of my blocks of time is admin. So during that time, I can be answering emails. I can be doing website maintenance or talking to my students. So many different things. I don't have to sit there and schedule in every tiny little detail. I just know that from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., This is the general list of tasks I need to complete. And by doing it that way, I give myself a little flexibility and I don't get quite so overwhelmed. I do sometimes make very detailed to-do lists and that also helps. 
All right. Speaking of goals, Steph and Olivia asked, what are your goals for 2022? And did you have any goals for 2021 that you smashed? <laughs> okay, so let's start with 2021. Uh, I set a goal for myself to publish a video on YouTube every single week of the year. And if I could, I would do more. But here's the thing, you guys, I freaking love making videos. I love the creativity it requires to pick the right music and, and chop things together in a pleasing way and the whole storytelling aspect of it. I'm a very visual person as well, so capturing the beauty of nature in video, not just photo, is so much fun. And of course, sharing the artwork, sharing the process, I also knew that I wanted to focus on plein air painting, so I did, I kind of combined those two things, making videos about plein air painting. I do have to admit though that those are the hardest videos to make because I'm by myself out there trying to film myself and it's hard enough to do plein air painting without filming yourself, so you get the idea. But I'm so glad I did it because now I can look back at those videos and it's so crazy to me because even if I look back at like my videos from April or May last year, I'm like, whoa, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost like a different person now. I've grown so much artistically, but also as a person, mentally, emotionally. So it's kind of cool to have like this, this video diary of my life, but you know, it is a challenge to still do all the other things I do in my business and keep up with that kind of schedule, posting, making and posting videos so often. Someday I hope I can afford to hire an editor to help me with even, even if they helped me with like half of my videos, <laughs> uh, or like if I could hire Wolfie to follow me around and film me when I'm painting instead of me having to set up the camera everywhere and worry about the memory cards and the batteries and all of that, like that would be awesome. My goal for 2022 with my channel is to try to do a video every other week and really try not to fall back into the trap of feeling guilty for not posting a weekly video because I tend to do that if I if I take a little time away from my online communities I feel guilty so I have to remind myself like there's a reason I'm doing this it's to keep that healthy balance it's to be successful in my business and in my personal life. And the other thing is I want to make more meaningful content. I want to make videos that make someone feel something. <laughs> and maybe I already do that a little, but I want to do it even more and be more conscious of every single choice I make in the video and how that affects the viewer. Um, I want to make you cry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to make you happy and I want to make you inspired. And I want to share the beauty of nature, the beauty of life, of the seasons. And yeah, like just continue what I'm doing, but do it better. I think one of my other goals is to use social media less or at least be more conscious of it when I'm using it. Um, don't just like mindlessly scroll or feel like I have to post every single day. Like I'm done with that. That is a huge reason I feel like I burned out at the end of last year, just trying to keep up with that. And there's, it doesn't improve my life. It makes it worse. So I'm going to have a healthier relationship with social media from now on. Next question. Art Fuel asks, do you believe that every artist can have a successful art business or are there already some very famous and successful artists who own the scene? Every single artist has the potential to change the world. I believe that with every fiber of my being. And here's the thing. The world is massive. There are billions of people in the world. And most of them don't make art. A lot of them buy art. A lot of people like art. But artists are a very tiny portion of the world population. So you have the power to make a difference with your art. It doesn't matter if there are some artists that have millions of followers who, who have a big influence. There is still so much room for you. And the cool thing that I've discovered is that the more you share your art, the more you stay true to yourself, you're, the, the more you are authentic and share your authentic self, not some like fake version of yourself, 
the more you're going to find people you connect with on a deeper level. And that's what matters. The amount of followers you have doesn't matter. It's how you connect with them. If you keep at it, you keep growing your skills as an artist, you continue sharing your art, you are bound to touch someone's heart, someone's soul with your art. And that is like the most magical feeling in the world. So don't think about how many artists there are or who's popular, who's out there before you. Like, just do your thing. Just be your own awesome self. Okay, next question. Tammy asks, do you print and ship your own prints or outsource them? If you do print your own prints, how did you choose good paper, printer, etc.? Um, I print my own prints. I use a Canon PIXMA Pro 100S. And I typically use a variety of papers. It just depends what I'm doing. I mostly like matte papers and satin finish papers because it makes the art just look so good. And I always choose archival quality. Uh, and I always use the native Canon ink as well to make sure my printer doesn't have issues. I've been using the same printer for years and it's still awesome. And if I have a huge order of prints or I'm doing some kind of special print, I do have a local printer that I use that is really high quality and I can get Gicle prints made with them. But I much prefer to make my own prints because I'm a bit of a control freak and it means I can just like make, I can monitor the quality from start to finish and I can sign them myself. My business is small enough where I can handle the quantity. And until that point where I get like overwhelmed with the amount of orders I have, I'm going to continue doing that. I just like to control it all. Do you have any tips for art print packaging? Yes, I will show it on screen right now. How do you store or organize your digital files? Example, reference photos for projects, etc. Uh, I'll put a screenshot on the screen so you can see what I do. It's all very organized because otherwise I can't find anything and it drives me crazy. It's mainly because I make a lot of videos and in order to find all of the content that I put in my videos, I have to stay organized. Last question from Celeste. I've started to notice that commissions don't bring me joy anymore. They make me very anxious and scared to fail. Do you think an artist can be successful without taking commissions? I hate commissions. <laughs> I mean, I some of them are okay. I used to love them. When I first started, I really loved commissions. Uh, and I've noticed commissions do push me outside of my comfort zone in a way where I'll try subjects I normally wouldn't do on my own, which is really cool. And I've grown a lot as an artist by doing commissions over the years, but I no longer do them. I have way too many personal art goals and personal art that I want to make. And basically the way I saw it is the moment I could afford not to take commissions, I stopped <laughs> because I want to pursue my own goals. So yes, you can absolutely make a living without doing commissions. It, I, I know the feeling when you're stuck in that routine of taking commissions. It's like all you can do. Uh, and I did it for years, so I get it. But you can make a living without that. Next question, Leanna asks, I'm curious about how to set prices. Okay, this is all about pricing artwork. I shared a video about this. I'll put a link to it somewhere. Enjoy. Next question from Northern Birder. Um, I wonder how an American from Colorado ended up in Scotland. It's interesting how mobile this world is indeed. I will put another link to another video <laughs> about why I'm in Scotland, how I came to live here. Um, okay, next question. Paint with Pencil asks, are there any YouTube channels that you love to learn from that you would recommend? So here's the thing. I actually don't watch a lot of artists. I look at people's art a lot and I follow a lot of artists, but I don't binge watch art videos or watch a lot of art videos. I watch a lot of nature videos. I watch a lot of hiking and van life videos and building cabin videos and all of the other kinds of videos. Um, but I do follow a lot of artists. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a list of names on the screen right now. You can take a screenshot or pause the video and write them all down. But these are the people that I have watched that I think make really great learning videos, teaching videos. So from all different mediums, all different subjects, these artists just make really great videos if you're curious about learning a specific medium. 
Next, we have a list of people who make videos that they also do. Some of these people do teaching videos, but a lot of these I follow because they're just really inspirational. For instance, Proko, a lot of people know Proko makes tons of learning videos, but they also make the draft the Draftsman podcast, which is such a good podcast. I love it so much. And I just get so inspired from it. Um, and then some of these people, I just think their art is wonderful, or they make really relaxing, enjoyable, inspirational art videos. So enjoy. And then we move on to the sort of lifestyle or nature videos. These people I've, I watch regularly. I think they are just wonderful at sharing the beauty of nature. And then we have some photographer channels. I follow tons of photographers. As you guys know, I'm also a photographer. Um, but here's a couple that I think are just awesome. They make really, really entertaining videos, especially Photo Tripper. They are like comedy videos as well. <laughs> And because I've been making more videos in the last few years, I watch a ton of videos about filming, about um, videography. A lot of these people make super, super inspiring videos, but they also teach about how to make videos. So there's a huge variety there. And then lastly, here's a list of people that make awesome van life videos, or some of them are now like living in cabins or building their own cabins because of um, they can't travel around the world. Travel is more restricted now. But like van life videos are some of my favorites. I live vicariously through them. Okay, next, Evie asks, I'm curious what your tax settlement looks like at your work as an artist. Okay, these are very specific business questions, uh, but basically what it comes down to is I'm not an expert or an advisor, a financial advisor or a tax advisor. So you do need to get your own advisor, your own accountant, someone who is who knows the laws in your country or your state and can advise you properly. That said, here's what I do. I have an accountant who files my taxes for me. I pay them when they file my taxes, but I do all of my own bookkeeping. They have a QuickBooks account, which I log into and I input all of my income and expenses and categorize everything so that whenever tax time comes, they have all the information. It takes tons of work and it's the most annoying part of this job. I hate it so much. And I have to admit, sometimes I let my... Um, bookkeeping pile up for months and then I have to sit down and spend like three solid days doing all the bookkeeping and it's pure torture. But you know, the peace of mind of having an accountant, a professional who knows what they're doing <laughs> and someone who can take care of all the paperwork side of things, that is that peace of mind is worth their fees. So think of that as an important business expense from the very first moment you start your business. Plan ahead, save up that money ahead of time, and know that once or twice a year, however they bill you, you're going to owe them their fee, and they're going to help you with your taxes. Peace of mind. Done. They A lot of them will also do your bookkeeping for you, but that's an extra fee usually, so I just do it myself. Oh, and yes, I have insurance. Business insurance is important. A lot of countries or some certain places require you to have it. So just make sure you're following your rules. And there's so many places online that you can get business insurance, even stuff that's like catered more towards artists or photographers. Do some searching online in, in whatever country you're in, and you're definitely going to find some options. Okay, next question. Mepez asks, how do you feel about erasing projects after they're done as opposed to saving them? Do you miss the art you send out to clients? Have you ever lost a huge collection or a piece that you loved? Yeah, okay. Basically, I have destroyed many paintings over the years. I've even destroyed paintings while I was streaming and my viewers were like, no, like, what are you doing? Getting really upset with me. But sometimes I just let the passion take over and I get furious at the painting and I just rip it in half or I paint over it. <laughs> I'm only human. But thankfully, I do still have some of my earliest paintings from six years ago. And I'm so grateful. I look at them and I'm like, wow, okay, I've come a long way. <laughs> and it is very encouraging to see those early paintings. So if you can, just put them in a box somewhere, even if you don't look at them for like 50 years, 
you will be so thankful you did that. Denise asks uh, for your social media art account. Is it better to be honest about mental health or just leave it as easy breezy? How did you first start to talk about mental health on your channels? When I started painting, I was also streaming full time. So basically my whole art experience has been being me learning as an artist was being witnessed by strangers. And there were so many times where I felt super vulnerable through that experience. I just found that time and time again, the more honest I am about everything, like the struggles I have as an artist or a person, the more I connect with people. It's just a much more meaningful connection. I have no interest in portraying like this fake perfect artist life. If anyone thinks I'm perfect, you haven't watched enough of my videos. <laughs> like I talk about it all the time. I talk about my struggles and the responses I get from those discussions are so much more meaningful than if like I post a piece of art I finished really well on social media and I get a hundred likes and a bunch of heart emoji comments. Like okay, that's nice, but it just vanishes in history. Whereas my conversations with people about what it's like to be an artist, what we go through as artists, what we struggle with, what, what, our, what our successes is and how much more meaningful those successes are because we struggled, like that is what matters to me. So it's totally up to you if you decide to share any of it and how much you share. I've shared so much about my mental health over the years, either on stream or in videos, that I've just seen the benefits of doing that rather than being fake and having no connection, no real connection with my audience. Uh, okay, so, oh, we're on the last question. Sredna, Sredna, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, asks, I'm curious how long it took you to make a living off your art. I've heard other artists say a few years to a decade. It varies drastically for everyone. Um, I think it's important for new artists to hear this or, or to know this, that it's so rare for someone's path to be super straightforward from beginning as a brand new beginner to successful making a living as an artist. Most often there are a million little side quests that happen along the way. But like the whole concept of waking up, painting in the studio all day, having lovely meals, having fun with friends and family, then going to sleep and starting it the next day. Like, I don't know anyone who does that. Even the artists I know who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year don't do that. They have a crazy life, <laughs> but it's a good crazy, like they love it. So more often, I think it's our path is like ups and downs, roller coaster, you could even call it. Someday, sometimes we're moving forward, sometimes we move back a little bit. For me, it's been a crazy roller coaster and I've been learning to paint as I make a living as an artist, because I was streaming while I was a brand new beginner painter, um, I was making money from streaming on Twitch. So it wasn't directly related to my art, but I was streaming my artwork. <laughs> so it's a little weird. But once I started focusing more on making personal art, getting into galleries, selling my personal art, making classes, teaching, I think that was about three years before I was making a sustainable living that way. And even then it was like constantly up and down because there's always other things going on in life. Like I was moving to Scotland. I was getting a very expensive visa. And so most often than not, like all of my savings suddenly vanished or I was living paycheck to paycheck. And like, it's a constant <laughs> roller coaster. Um, so, you know, think back to what I said about passive income, work on that, work on multiple sources of income to help you be more sustainable. And if you have a system in place where you're bringing in money somehow, maybe you have a full-time job or a part-time job and you're doing art on the side, like as long as you're able to pay the bills and continue growing your skills, that's going to help you move forward. And eventually you'll take a leap of faith and <laughs> you'll be a full-time artist. Uh, but even then, 
some people wait until they have a lot of money in their savings before they do that, and others wait until they have just enough to survive for a few months. As like a basic piece of advice, waiting until you have six, at least six months of savings in your account that you could live on before you become, before you quit your day job and, and pursue art full time or any passion really, like you want to have savings in case you don't make any money on your new passion for X amount of time, six months. Just do that as like a cushion, as a safety net. I would say a year is even better. A year's worth of savings is even better, but it's just one person's advice. Don't quit if you don't have any savings because it's just really sad when you know an artist who's so passionate and they're so good at what they do, but they haven't built up any savings or a big enough following and then they quit and then they struggle so much for a while and then they have to go back to getting a part-time job and they feel really bad about it but they shouldn't <laughs> because it's hard um ideally you would have a little bit of savings to allow yourself time to ease into this new job it's a career like doing art for a living is a career just like any other career so um having that savings to like kind of help you get ease into it without worrying about making money constantly, which can totally destroy your passion <laughs> if you're not careful. Um, I think that's really important because it varies so drastically from person to person. It's like, I can't really give a straight answer, <laughs> but you know, it depends on a lot of things, how much you share your art online, how much you're growing a following, uh, all of the different sources of income you're, you, you have, <sighs> Yeah, I know this isn't the best answer, but oh my gosh, my throat hurts from talking. <laughs> I don't talk this much usually. This is like the most I've talked all week. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this answering all these questions. If you have any other questions I didn't answer or want me to elaborate, I can maybe start collecting questions for the next Q&A. Um, but yeah, Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support. And if you're new here, you could consider subscribing. I do a lot of different types of art videos. So there's this little button under the video of a thumbs up symbol. If you press that, it shows that you liked it and it was cool. Uh, if you didn't like the video, I'm really sorry. You can press the thumbs down button twice. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here until you guys click on the next video. It's good, good talking to you. Leave some comments if you want to talk. This is totally normal and fine. Okay. <laughs>